Today we're gonna go over some of the major and recent news and updates related to Blender and other 3D software and computer graphics in general that you probably didn't hear about. First of all, we're gonna talk about Adobe joining the Blender Development Fund. Over the years, creators and artists in the Blender community are giving shares of their profits to the Blender Development Fund. Recently, big companies started following their lead. And surprisingly, Adobe has chosen to take part in this beautiful act. But due to the fact that many consider this company to be evil, this action has raised many eyebrows and a ripple effect of fear and suspicions. But the fact is, Blender Development Fund needs all the help it can get, which serves the development of this amazing free and open source software. They have now Substance 3D and Maximo Auto Control Rig plugin, which are both gonna be accessible for Blender users all around the world. Even if this cooperation looks beneficial for Blender only, don't forget that it also benefits Adobe. Even though they may have ulterior motives behind this generous act, on the surface everything seems good for now, but time will tell. Next we have RenderMan 24.1 for Blender released. On July 30th, Pixar RenderMan released their newest RenderMan version for Blender, only a few weeks after the release of RenderMan 24, which has already brought major updates to log development with amazing tools. If you are interested, I recommend to read the report. However, the latest update came with more improvements to those updates, in addition to several bug fixes. Next is the release of Maya 2022. A new release finally came and brought with it interesting improvements, but not so revolutionary as usual, which will make Maya easier to use and more efficient for professionals at least. The new update touched the new interface mainly with a new home screen, which intends to help users get the best out of the software with a totally innovative welcome screen displaying learning content, communities, documentations, and recent projects. Also, it is now easier for users to find tools with a new search feature. At the same time, several bugs were fixed next to some relevant technical improvements. Like the Creative Maya bot, the new gamified interactive getting started tutorial and quick tour will help users explore Maya's interface and tools. It also teaches basic new users, while advanced users will have the chance to benefit from a usable framework to create customized interface tutorials to share with students or team members. Furthermore, advanced users can go directly to more detailed features documentations, which will show you the updates step by step. Another interesting news that came out is the Blender by Numbers 2020, because finally, we can know in numbers how was the last year for Blender. And it was one of the best results and progress Blender has ever made actually. The rate of visits to Blender official website and its subdomains have increased by 35%, which is almost 2 million visitors per month. The pages which marked the highest visiting rates are the download page followed by the thank you page. While these visitors are from all over the world, we can see that 50% of them were centralized in 8 countries only, and 71% of it was dominated by China. This is not all of it of course, because this great software has been downloaded over 14 million times in 2020. In other words, it is a 3.5 download per release across different platforms. Also, the development fund donations have significantly increased over 10% in the last year, thanks to individual memberships alongside corporations, without forgetting to mention that it gathered a total of 108 new contributors, which is great. Next is Seagraph 2021 conference. This year, Seagraph is celebrating 84 years of improvements, and they are holding their premier virtual conference this week from the 9th to the 13th August of 2021. And registrations for it have been launched in February of this year and were closed by April. They also offer on demand content, which will be available for viewers in October. The Seagraph conference mainly aims to share innovations from their talented community. And because they care about the safety of the global computer graphics community, they decided to go this time as a virtual event only. There will be live events for computer graphics, digital art, animation, visual effects, machine learning, artificial intelligence, immersive and mixed realities, scientific visualization, and more. Next is the release of 3D Code 2021. 
3D Code 2021 has just came out last month with a change to the pricing structure introducing new lower cost options. There is a more configurable user interface including the option to add the entire custom rooms, also new rooms for kit bashing and roughing out new low poly models for sculpting, in addition to updates to the brush engine and sculpting brushes. Furthermore, there is the new Smart Retopo system that creates clean quad geometry following your hand-drawn guide curves, in addition to other new tools, features, and updates if you want to take a look at them. Also recently, the software handbook from Escape Studios has been released. Escape Studios offer courses that are designed, developed, and delivered in collaboration with leading studios to make sure that they stay relevant. They have very interesting programs and short courses in visual effects, game art, animation, motion graphics, and other specialties and disciplines as well. One of the free privileges they offer next to several scholarships is their software handbook, which is very useful if you want to be on top of your industry and stay updated. It has all the key software that are used by the creative industries at the very moment, next to free software that are used by many designers so they can take advantage of all the tools they have. It has on it everything about VFX, animation, games, and motion graphics software to help you understand how they are used and by whom exactly. Next we're going to talk about Blender 3.0 release. Todd Rosendahl, the chairman of the Blender Foundation, has declared that the awaited Blender 2021 or the release of 3.0, which was planned to be uncovered early this year, will not be released until October or September. Apparently, they postponed the release of Blender 3.0 because of the need to hold more workshops with core contributors to solve pressing design issues and all the problems that occurred. Actually, this release of Blender will have a lot in store. There are gonna be minor updates with less ambitious goals, aside from already planned projects to tackle like the node systems, animation, rigging, physics, particles, hair real-time editing, and more. And it will go for another two years, preparing for the next major release, which is 4.0, and that would be by 2023. And it seems like the extra development time indicates that Cycles Axe will too be part of the release. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.